What's up guys, Mike here, and today we are going to go over how to earn tons of MT through Gauntlet. Because if you've been watching my videos, you see that I do always have a good amount of MT. And no, I never buy it. What I do do is play the game a lot, and I play it effectively. And the number one way to earn MT effectively is through Gauntlet in this game. Now to start things off, I just want to say that if you're trying to collect a bunch of cards, this really isn't going to work out for you in terms of making MT. The reason being that the way to earn a ton of MT through Gauntlet is to actually sell almost every single card you get. I'm talking coaches, I'm talking jerseys, I'm talking, of course, players, and even contracts. So if you're trying to collect a bunch of cards, it won't work out for making MT. However, it will work out for just getting a bunch of cards because there are tons of cards you could just earn by playing Gauntlet. So as I said, we're going to sell everything in this method. However, first I'm going to get into what boards you should be using. Now, if you first start Gauntlet, you're going to have to use the bronze board. Just get as many wins as possible and move on to the silver board. Then do the same thing. Get as many wins as possible, then move on. The reason being that the first board that's actually worth anything is the gold board. The gold board can get you some good gold jerseys, some actually awesome badges, some even silver players, and of course, one gold player. Now, my strategy for this board is that every single time I get the gold player, I just reset the board. The reason being that there are 30 total cards on the board and 31 possible wins if you go 10-0 and in Gauntlet. So I don't like to leave myself any risk for not getting another gold player because those are obviously the most valuable. Especially if you pull a Westbrook, a Kyrie, a Kawhi, a Paul George, any of those. Now the next board you can unlock is the 5000 MT board. Just don't even bother with it. There's too many cards, not enough good stuff on there. The board after that, the first Amethyst board, is actually pretty good. I mean, the pulls aren't amazing there. The gold board does have better pulls, except you can get Clyde Drexler there. So right on the first Amethyst board is Clyde Drexler. He is definitely worth it. I still use him in my gauntlet roster. So at this point, it's definitely worth it just to get a pretty solid Amethyst player. He'll definitely be a good contribution to your roster. Now the next board is the 10K MT board. We're going to skip that one for now. Go to the last Amethyst board, which is the best board in the game. Seriously, this board has tons of gold players, awesome MT rewards from 1,000 to 5,000 MT. Literally the lowest MT you could get on this is 1,000. Awesome badges, like there's a bunch of posterizers, limitless range, stuff like that. And just a bunch of gold cards in general. And the ultimate reward is Bob Cousy, who I don't really use. I don't think he's that good. However, if you have kind of a weak gauntlet roster, he could be good for you. And coming back to the 10K MT reward, now I wouldn't suggest using this board unless you're at my situation, which is you have a bunch of cards collected, like gold cards and silver cards, and you're both trying to make MT on duplicates and also collect cards that you don't already have, like bronze cards. Because this board does give you a ton of bronze players, a ton of bronze jerseys and stuff, but it doesn't give you any good gold players. It doesn't give you anything you'd actually want to play with or really sell for value. It just gives you cards that you probably haven't collected already. Okay, and so I just want to emphasize this point before we move on. If you're doing this to grind to make MT, you sell everything. Not just duplicates, not anything like that. You sell every single thing you can get value for. You get a gold coach, put him up on the market. You get a nice gold player, as long as he's not going on your roster, put him up on the market. Silver players, bronze players, same thing. And this also goes for contracts. Now, in the beginning, you probably won't have a ton of contracts, so use those on all the people on your gauntlet roster. However, once you have a good contract base set, start selling every contract you get. List the bronze contracts at 250, those might not sell, but list the silver contracts at 300 and list the gold contracts at 400. They will sell. And there are tons of contracts in this game, so I'm emphasizing this the most. Sell all your contracts, those points will add up. Now moving on, I wanna talk about your roster. Now I have a pretty awesome roster right now and yours might not be as good, however, you should still mold it in the same way. So what you're looking for are guards and wings who can shoot threes and just drive to the basket. Because here's the thing about your one single gauntlet player that you choose. You have to just assume that this guy is gonna score basically every single point for you. That's because sometimes you just get horrible pulls, like two bronze centers. Now, if you had Dwight Howard in that situation on your roster, you'd be screwed. So you always wanna have guards and wings that can shoot and dribble the ball and just score in general. Because guards and wings are the most important players in Gauntlet by far. Now, moving into the gameplay, we're gonna start off by doing what is the first round cheese. And that's basically choose your worst player on your roster. Then just click X twice, add the two players on there, and if you don't get a diamond, Literally a diamond, like that's what I go for. Then just cancel out and just redo. Yep, just cancel the series, there's no penalty, and just keep going in and keep doing this. Now I emphasize a diamond because yes, you could get a pretty good roster. However, another main goal here is to save your time and just get people to quit. Literally, if you get a really good roster with a diamond on it, people might just quit before you even start to play. So you just save your time, boom, you get picks without even playing a game. Now we're going to jump into more gameplay scenarios here, but I'm just going to do that voiceover because this will be distracting. 
Now, the key to creating offense in Gauntlet is playing fast paced and looking for three point shooters. Three pointers are worth double the amount of shots inside the key. So make sure to look for as many threes as possible. Now, the first way to create easy offense is to turn your defense into offense. As you can see here, on rebounds, I look for easy passes up the court, as you can often get quick layups or dunks. This will usually force your opponent to run his defenders into the paint when you are on a fast break, which opens you up for easy three-point looks in transition. Now, even if your opponent scores, you can still get quick baskets off the inbounds pass. The computer AI is very stupid in Gauntlet, so if you inbound the ball past half court, you can often get an open layup or dunk. And even if your opponent stops you, you can often find a man cutting to the basket for an easy score. Now that we've talked about fast breaks, let's talk about half court offense. If your opponent is playing man to man, you must beat him off the dribble. From there, you have two options. If there is no help, simply take a layup or a dunk. That is easy. However, your main object on drives to the basket should be to get shooters open. Again, the AI defense is stupid. They will try to cut off your layup or dunk every single time, even if it allows a great three-point shooter a wide open three. So what you should do is target your shooters, drive to the rim, and draw their defenders. Then kick it out to them for easy looks. Now, look at this specific example. John Wall has the ball while J.R. Smith is in the corner. Wall beats his man off the dribble and Smith's man comes over to help. This allows me to make an easy pass to Smith, who drains the open three. Now, sometimes you will kick it out to an open man and he will not be behind the three-point line. If you have enough time, do not shoot it. There's no reason to take long ones. Let things play out. You can often get an easier shot as the defense scrambles. And quick note, if you are having trouble beating your man off the dribble, try some pick and rolls. They can really open up your offense. From there, let's go to another form of defense you will see. Often people will play off ball and there are two easy ways to combat this. The first is if they are playing off ball by keeping a man in the paint, simply take one of your shooters, call for a pick, and then run off the pick for a wide open three. Let's run that play back. You see, my opponent is controlling a man in the paint. I call for a pick, and when it comes, I run my man into the screen. Once he goes under, I am wide open for three and drain the shot. The second off-ball defense you will see is if they are playing off-ball on the wing. This is the easiest way to score in Gauntlet. Simply press the cut to basket button, which is triangle on PS4 and Y on Xbox, and have that man cut to the basket for an easy point blank shot. As you see here, my opponent is playing off ball against my man on the wing. I run at him, press cut to the basket, and bam, there's an easy point. Now we're gonna switch things up and talk about defense. The key to defense is basically stopping all of the points I just told you about, which means stopping the inbounds cheese first and foremost. Be aware of this, take your guys and run them off ball and make sure your opponent does not get wide open baskets right away. The next thing is stopping fast breaks, which is basically the same thing. Just make sure your opponent is not getting easy baskets in transition and make them play half court offense. You see here, my opponent is trying to get a fast break score. I run my man who was covering the guy trailing the play into the paint forcing my opponent to make a quick panic decision which ends up in a steal. Now with this said, you also want to overplay on three-point shooters. Like I said before, three-point shooters are key on offense, but they can kill you on defense. You see, on this play, my opponent tries to kick the ball out for an open three. I overplay the three, then I'm able to recover enough to force a miss. And on this play, you see my opponent drives to the basket. Instead of allowing my dumb AI to make the wrong play, I quickly switch off ball so that my defender stays where he is forcing him into a bad shot. And the final thing is just contest everything. Fouls count for nothing in Gauntlet. It's just like you block the ball out of bounds. So make sure you contest everything in the paint, and sometimes you'll force a miss, and sometimes you'll get a foul. Fouls, who cares? But misses, bang, you're right there pushing the fast break. And one quick bonus tip, you have to remember that the player you're playing is human. So in Gauntlet, when you are scoring, they are going to want to inbound the ball as fast as possible. So hang your guy back and maybe you can get some easy steals on the inbounds, which leads to more possessions and a better chance at winning. All right, guys, we're back. And as you see my gameplay tips, they really help me. You can just read the computer. You know what other people are going to do. Your roster's all set. You're going to win a bunch of games. So I hope you enjoyed this guide. If you have any more questions, feel free to comment down below. Leave a like if this helped you out and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I do helpful videos like this. I do Road to the Playoffs. I'm on seed one right there. And I do pack openings. About to open up a bunch of all-star packs when they drop. And as always, have an awesome day, my dudes. And cue that music.